Hello, beautiful people. I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant, and this is The Other Side of the Dash. Welcome back to the other side of the dash. I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button. If you're following on YouTube, if you're listening via podcast, please follow me wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Today, we have a guest who is going to talk with us about adult caregiving. So I want to introduce caregiver and entrepreneur, Carmelita Brown. Carmelita, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. And Carmelita and I have been getting to know each other over the last couple, few months, actually. It's been Mm -hmm. a few months. And um, it's interesting. She is the caregiver for her mother. And we're going to talk about that and some other things. But I think this is a very interesting topic because many of us are being responsible for our parents, our children, our grandchildren. And sometimes it can be hard. Uh, Sometimes we have no one to talk to. Sometimes we need an out. We need some advice. Sometimes we feel like we need a break. So that's what Carmelita and I are going to talk about today. So Carmelita, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I, like you said, I'm Carmelita Brown. I am a full-time caregiver for my mom. uh, And I've been so for the last 15 years or so. Um, And not just for my mom, well, I am for my mom now, but I was previously caregiver um, for my aunt and uncle. Um, I have three beautiful adult girls. Um, One is my bonus daughter, and then I have a beautiful granddaughter, my granddaughter. I call her my granddaughter. Um, And uh, so that's pretty much it. And I do a little entrepreneur. Uh, I sell t-shirts and crafts. I am an avid crafter. So, okay. and I'm also um, vice president of a nonprofit called Be Natural Music Therapy and Wellness. And I'm totally so psyched about that. We just really started doing a whole lot in the community. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Tell us a little bit more about that. What exactly do you guys do? So Be Natural Music Therapy and Wellness is um, where we reach out to underserved communities. Um, That's where we started, but um, now we're we're adding more people to the group. Um, We teach Tai Chi, Qigong, breathing techniques. We have a physical trainer um, who was teaching stretching and things of that nature. We also have a massage therapist. So we're just coming out in the community. We're finding that, um, you know, as part of the underserved community, there is PTSD. I mean, in this COVID thing, just like wore people out. Um, We focus on trauma, you know, um, domestic violence, women that are uh, being in the, uh, being, have been in the domestic violence arena, right? Um, so I, we're just totally excited about that because, um, sometimes we need those, um, stress mechanisms, right? Um, when you can't talk to somebody. So we're teaching how to do some of those stress techniques or stress reliever techniques that doesn't require a whole lot of equipment or anything like that. Right. Right. Um, tapping, breathing, um, stretching, things like that. So I'm, I'm so excited about that. Okay, good. Okay. Now let's talk about some of your entrepreneurship endeavors. You mentioned t-shirts. Uh, tell us about that and a little bit about the other things that you do. Yeah. Well, I just started, I've always been a crafter of sorts, a DIYer. Um, and, um, I finally, maybe a year, well, it was a year ago, Christmas, my daughter, uh, my baby girl gifted me a cricket machine. 
So I was super excited and she was like, okay, so what are you going to do with it? <laughs> making um, little gifts and things for family. Um, and then people start asking about them. So, um, so I usually do pop-ups um, at different craft areas and different vending um, things and do pop-ups with t-shirts and I make plaques and I've got a couple of new things that are coming um, that I'm really excited about. That's funny because I have bought me the Cricut Explore 2 and mm -hmm. it's sitting on a table in my dining room and I've made a couple t-shirts, but I really want to get into it. Um, but sometimes I get discouraged because I belong to a Facebook Facebook group called uh, Cricut Sisterhood and uh, the stuff that they make, I'm like, wow, I don't have the patience or the time or maybe it's just I'm just overwhelmed by it. So you and I are gonna have to get together and you have to teach me some tricks about that. <laughs> Absolutely, because the being overwhelmed is really the big thing because mine stayed in the box. I will tell you, she bought it for uh, Christmas and it was like February. And she was like, okay, I haven't received anything yet. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, and I like you joined a lot of different groups. And finally, I was just like, okay. Um, it's a couple of people that I follow actually on YouTube that are real. Um, it's almost like, for the lack of a better term, cricket for dummies. Um, so watching the tutorials and then just giving you that confidence. Okay, I've got this or watching as you go along. So yeah, I love it. Um, I really do. I have to uh, make sure that I do the craft because I'll have all of these ideas that come in your head. And it's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And you go in the craft store and you get totally excited or mm -hmm. you look on, you know, you get excited about something and you realize, okay, I have a crafting habit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we're going to definitely have to get together and, 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 and do some things. So let's go ahead and talk about the main reason we are here, uh, caregiving. If you don't mind me asking you how, well, let's start back. Let's start back a little bit with your, your aunt and uncle that you mentioned. How did you come to care for them? Um, I had, long story short, I moved to Georgia, I came back, and my mom ended up staying with them, right? Um, and my aunt was really sick, actually, it was my, my uncle that was the one that was sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, because my mom lived with them, you know, I was like, I would go over there, and I would just see how my mom was doing. And while I was there, of course, I'm not going to see how my mom is doing, you not see how the rest of the family is doing, right? Right. So it started with, okay, well, can you go to the doctor with me? And sure. Or can you take me to the doctor? Of course I can, you know? And uh, this was my mom's older brother and his wife. And um, so I start doing that. I mean, and it was just second nature. So then the doctors would call me, was like, well, can I have your phone number? They're older. Can we have your phone number as an emergency contact or whatever, if we have any questions or anything like that? So of course you can. So that's how it started. You know, it was because of my love for my family. And would you mind taking me to the doctor? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now your mother, so now you're a caregiver for your mother. Uh, what's the situation with your mother is, uh, why you're her caregiver? Well, my mom has a litany of um, medical um, conditions, um, congestive heart failure, you know, the normal Black America right. uh, type things, right? The diabetes, the high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all of that. And about 11 years ago, we really did almost lose her. Um, and uh, one of the things that happened is that we had taken her to the hospital. She was in the hospital. Um, and, and the doctor said, well, we've done all that we can. Right. Uh, and that particular hospital, I was not pleased with. So I had her transfer to another hospital. And um, I went in and I am one of those people who consistently hold on to everything. So every test that she had had, every x-ray, you know, I had a huge binder full of all of that. Every time she would go to the doctor office, notes, I chart stuff. Like we chart daily what her blood pressure is, her weight, her oxygen saturations, just all of that, right? So when I went into the hospital, to the second hospital, and I had all of that, and the doctor said, oh, let me um, 
we need to get this test. And I was like, no, we have this test. And it was just done a couple of days ago. Showed him the paperwork and he was like, okay. And he said, well, so we'll move to the next one. Let her, let's get this one. I said, no, she had that one a couple of days ago. And he said, well, let me see that binder. So I gave it to him and he was able to, he was like, ma'am, you just saved your mom's life. He said, because I'm able to get to the root of it. Right. Well, after they had gotten her stable, um, everybody like the students were coming in saying are you the one with the binder are you the one with the book with all of the stuff in it so everybody was impressed with that and and for me it was nothing you know that's just what I do and so from that point I realized that I have something here you know and then it's not just that I have to be a caregiver I get to be a caregiver for my mom Linda. right I, I get to do that because she cared for me um when I was young, when I couldn't do it, right? I get to do that. Good, that's, that's great to hear uh, because a lot of people, I'm, honestly, I've talked to, they feel like they're burdened uh, doing that. They, they, they do it because it's their parents, but sometimes they feel burdened. So my next question to you is, do you ever feel overwhelmed um, with it at times? And if you do, uh, what are some things you do to kind of help with that? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I am one of those persons who, uh, first of all, um, I was reluctant to ask for help, right? Uh, my mom had three children. Um, my brother passed away a couple of years ago. My baby brother passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and I would reach out to my brothers um, and say, hey, you guys got to help me. I mean, you know, you have to step up. And um, because I myself have a medical uh, condition, I have multiple sclerosis. Okay. Um, so it's um, not easy. It's just, just not. Um, sometimes they would help, most times not. Um, and so I'd started, you know, in all honesty, bitterness started to come in. Right. Right. You, you get that. Why am I the only somebody? Why is it always me? You know, I need help. And then the siblings were, her, my mom's siblings were called. And I mean, you know, the, everybody had something to say, but nobody was doing anything, right? <laughs> I know that. <laughs> so, so that, you know, it's like, well, why is this? Or why didn't you call or whatever? Um, but through prayer, seriously, um, and a community of women, um, like where you and I are with Life on Life and uh, my small group, um, women praying for me, like seriously, you know, having that one person that you can, or a couple of people that honestly say, hey, I'm praying for you today. What can I do for you today, right? And sometimes that's all you need, you know? I just need sometimes just that person to say, girl, I'm stressed. Can you pray for me today? And I sincerely and genuinely know that they are doing that. Okay. So, okay. so is your mother like a lot of people are caregivers to their parents who are, who may have Alzheimer's or something like that. Is your mom like fully alert? Does she get out? Um, does she like to do things? My mom is alert. Um, as of late, she's had some cognitive issues so that we're testing on, I mean, you know, getting ready to test for that. Um, because of her conditions, she was not able, I mean, when you have congestive heart failure, sometimes it's just a chore um, to walk from the bed to the bathroom, right? Um, so she doesn't get out a, a whole lot. Um, she's getting better. So um, she, she told me, she was like, I'm ready to go back to church. If I don't do anything, but just go to church on Sunday and just take my time. So that's our next goal is to try and get her um, back in, you know, physically being in the church. Okay. Now, are you able to leave her home by herself and go out and do something? Um, are you, are you, you and I go to the same church. So yeah. and it's so big. So we don't always see, you know, are you fully back in church or do you, no, no, I'm okay. sorry. No, I'm not fully back in church um, because we were immune, uh, immunocompromised, right? Um, that I am always cognizant of that, and I all and and very careful with that because <laughs> um, we did get COVID, um, and it was after two years of zig and zagging and ducking and dodging. <laughs> you know, and not letting people in and all of that. 
um, that my um, nephew came over to see how we were doing and didn't realize that he had COVID. So mom oh. and I had COVID. Wow. And it was pretty ugly. Um, and I'm still recovering because I still have loss of smell and loss of taste. Um, so it's gradually coming back, but that was back in November that we had COVID. Wow. Oh. And I'm still having some lingering effects of it, right? So no, we hadn't fully gone back to church yet, but we're looking forward to going. I mean, you know, she's saying, oh, I think I can go back and I'll wear a mask and all of that. So, and take her time because I walk with assistance of a cane and then she's on a rollator walker. So we'll go really early so that we can walk in safely without being in a crowd and then wait for everybody to dismiss and then we'll head back out. So we've got a plan. So Okay. Okay. Do you guys like to go to places like parks or anything like that that's kind of open? Um, we haven't because of this Texas weather. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Texas weather. But that's one of the things that we're that she's looking forward to. I go to this place called Prayer Mountain. I don't know if you've ever heard of Prayer Mountain. Oh. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And um, that that's usually my place. I'll go up and sit and just have a time and just pray and just look at nature. So mom has been there a little a few times and she absolutely loved it. So she's like, oh, okay, I think we need to go to Prayer Mountain. So I said, okay. So we're making plans to start doing some stuff as the weather progresses. That's good. That's good. I know about this weather because I garden. I have a garden in the backyard. And I've tried, I started planting stuff in February. And a lot of it has died. A lot of it died last year. So I was out there yesterday and I kind of, you know, hopefully that was the last freeze, the last one we had. I'm praying that that's the last freeze, but um, I, I totally understand. Now, so people have different levels of care, mm -hmm. being caregivers, mm -hmm. but generally, what are some tips that you would give people out there who are facing uh, being a caregiver uh, to to anyone, but specifically parents, uh, to help them out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question. Um, and I, when I share, I'm one of those people who have a big mouth. It's like if I see somebody struggling in an area or something that I know that I can share, then I'm I'm happy to share that. Right. Um, I will say, as your parents are aging. Make sure, make sure that you have paperwork ahead of time. Yes. Um, it is so important to have the medical power of attorney, um, the durable will, the durable power of attorney, um, the HIPAA forms. Right now, it's really crazy. I mean, with the HIPAA forms, right? Um, or the HIPAA compliance. So have all of those things already because you never know when something is going to happen and you're going to need that. And just saying that that's my mom sometimes is not enough. Right. And I'm uh, glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because a lot of times um, our parents or even, you know, some of us will leave without any further instruction. And then mm -hmm. there's a lot of chaos because, so mm -hmm. you've mentioned before that you have these siblings that, you know, sometime we want to help, sometime we don't, then they're going to want to get involved in the end details when you are the one, you know, not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying it. People face it because people don't leave any directives on what to do once they leave here. Absolutely. Um, and that's what happened in the case of my aunt and uncle. Um, they entrusted me with certain things like where the insurance policies were and things of that nature that they didn't tell their children. And so I was the only one that knew that information. And then when I told them, it was just a big, you know, it's like, I'm not getting anything from this. So, you know, I just want to help you all, help you all and right. follow her wishes or their wishes. They've given me, but it wasn't in writing, right? Yeah. And you're absolutely right with the siblings. I mean, it's, we see so many, I don't know about any other communities, but in the Black community, we see so many families that are torn apart when a loved one passes away, right? And there are no instructions left. Mm 
whether it be no insurance or the insurance and only one beneficiary, or you're in the hospital and you're making decisions because um, you're the one that's been doing it, but another person who's older or whatever the case may be, right? Feel like they wanna come in and they have control. Well, I'm the oldest. And so I should be making all of the decisions right. when that person wasn't available during the time of the, the general the care, the caregiving actually the caregiving action of it, part of it. So I'll just definitely say, please, please, please. And I really can't stress that enough. I mean, have your parents put you, um, even when going to the doctor, right? Now they have my mom, I can make appointments for her because right now with HIPAA, the way that it is, if somebody were to call in and say, oh, I need to change an appointment for this person, they're going to look in their file and they're going to ask, who are you? And we don't have you on file. So I need to speak with that person. Right. I forbid that person is incapacitated, right? And you don't have that. And that person can't speak to them. Then that's a fight, right? Or you're lying saying, I'm this person, you know, I'm Glenda Brown or I'm whoever to try and get an appointment or to try, I mean, something as simple as an appointment or to cancel an appointment or whatever. So have all of your paperwork, you know, names at the doctor's office on file, the medical power of attorney, the, the um, directives, whether they decide that they want to be do a DNR, right. um, all of that and keep it in a safe place, keep it in a binder, share with the hospital your um, directives. Um, there's a mental health directive. If a person, I mean, and you know, you we're dealing with a lot of dementia and Alzheimer's in the community right now, right? Um, there's a mental health directive where you can say, okay, I don't want a male, you know, or I I I don't want a male um, technician handling me, right? right. Female. Right. Um, and they have to try and honor those as much as they can. So please, please have all of your paperwork together. I'm glad you, you, you've given us something to think about and you've given some valuable information. I think about, um, you know, us everyday people who, who do who do leave this earth without, you know, leaving information or the, as simple as, like you said, the DNR. And I think about those Hollywood stars that do the same thing and they leave their family fighting for years over this, that, this and that. So I'm glad you brought that up. I think I'm going to actually try to do an a, a episode talking about um, how to do DNRs and, you know, making sure your will is filled out and things like that. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Those and are I so think, important. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. I was just saying it. It's, it's vitally important. I mean, that, that that is on um, on file because, you know, at the time where things happen and things happen so quickly, um, you know, uh, with my aunt, uh, I'll just share just a quick story with my aunt. I was always at the doctor's office with her. The doctors knew me by name. They would call me and say, hey, Carmelita, how is your aunt doing? Whatever, whatever. Well, when she had her episode at home and we knew that time was near, right? Um, she had congestive heart failure and a pacemaker defibrillator and all of that. Um, so the doctor came in and because he knew me, he said, Carmelita, I need to talk with you. And I said, no, I need you to talk with her children. And he said, I don't know them. Right. I need to talk to you because you were here at every appointment. You were here. I mean, and he's saying this out in the waiting area, um, he said, no, he said, I don't know them, but I know you and you and I and your aunt discussed what her wishes were. So I'm going to talk to you. And I had to plead with him and literally almost walk away from him um, so that he would talk with her children um, because he didn't know them. Wow. Right? Um, and that became an issue with her children because I knew so much and I was there. So I'll just stress, I mean, to your audience, please, if nothing else, get those paperwork, get that paperwork together. I agree. And Carmelita, I enjoy talking to you today. Um, is there a way that our listeners and viewers can reach you if they want to get more information or if they want to uh, look at some of your shirts or, or order some of your shirts and things like that? 
I am working on my website with my shirts. I do apologize for that. But um, my um, Facebook um, and Instagram um, is what well, my Facebook is Carmi, Carmelie the Brown, I do believe. Um, mm -hmm. I am new to all of the social media stuff. Usually my, my daughter does all of that. Excuse me, these allergies got me a little bit. Yeah. Um, but Carmelita Brown on Facebook, Carmi's Blessed, I do believe on Instagram. Um, but, uh, and my, my email, which I will answer an email, I have no problem with that, is Carmi, C-A-R-M-I-S underscore B-L-S-D at yahoo.com. So you're more than welcome to reach out to me uh, with any questions about anything. I'd be happy to respond. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. So, I'm sorry. I do apologize, but also our my nonprofit is Be Natural Wellness. Um, I'm sorry, Be Natural Music Therapy and Wellness.org. And look for us. We're starting to do some things around town, some um, community events where um, we're going to be teaching Tai Chi, Qigong, breath work things of that nature. So uh, definitely look at that website um, for sure and uh, reach out to us and see what's coming up in the community. Great, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I'll put that information in the show notes and below here so everybody will have that information. Hi. So I uh, thank you again for being on the show and you and I will talk offline, but folks, that is uh, another episode of Other Side of the Dash in the Record Books. I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant. Have a great day.